Our program so far defined some variables, did some calculations with those variables, and then spit out the answer to the user. The data we had, the data assigned to those variables, was baked into the program itself. Running the program always calculated the same thing and always gave the same answer. To make the program calculate different things, we had to open up the code and change those values, recompile a whole new program, and then run it. But of course, you run programs and apps all the time, and to make them do different stuff, you don't need to mess with their code. When you launch an app, it typically just does nothing until you interact with it. You can click, tap on stuff, or type things into it. When you do tap or type stuff into a program, it's converted into data that the program can understand. The characters that you type into the keyboard are sent to the program one character at a time. Same with the position of your taps. We call all of that data being sent to the program input. The program does something with all that input data and can decide to output some data. So far, the output has just been text to the terminal that the user can read. Our programs get a lot more useful if the user can interact with them. Since you know C, you started to make these little robot kits. You programmed the robots to drive around and posted it online. Soon after, people wanted to buy them from you. People usually buy a few sets so they can do little robot battles. To figure out how many parts you need to ship, you wrote a little program where you can configure the number of sets you need, and then it spits out how many parts need to be included in the shipment. This packing list is handed over to a different team member to pack and prep it for shipment. Each robot needs four motors, a battery, a controller chip, a couple sensors, and a frame to hold everything together. So we have this kit quantity variable that holds how many kits someone wants. So we multiply it by the various part requirements and print out the answers. Since this variable is hard coded, we need to open up the code, edit the variable, recompile, then run the program to get the results. But since this always changes, it makes a lot more sense for the program to simply ask us for the desired quantity. Printf takes the current value of a variable and then spits it out to the terminal. Scanf, on the other hand, does the opposite. It reads a value from the terminal and puts it into a variable. You'll notice that it looks similar to printf in that we still have this section here with a percentage %d. Like before, percentage %d is because we're dealing with an integer variable, whole numbers. And we still provide a variable here, but it has this little ampersand thing in front of it. We'll cover what this thing is in detail in later videos. But for now, just know that we need it, so scanf has the ability to change the value of our variable. And lastly, we no longer set the value of our variable up here because we don't know what the value is yet. It's going to be set by scanf for us, depending on what the user types in. Let's try to run this and see what happens. We'll compile and run. And then the program appears to just sit there, doing nothing. That's because the program first declared our variable, then ran this scanf line. Scanf knows it's looking for an integer, so now it's just sitting there. Forever. Time may advance, but not for Scanf. Diligent and resigned to its fate, it waits. A quiet plea. An integer, please. Only is the sweet release of process termination. A free. Or until you type a number, like 5, and hit enter. Then the program quickly resumes, and we get all of our quantities. It filled our kit quantity variable with 5, did all the calculations, and spit out our calculator parts. Let's do that again, but in slow motion. We declare our kit quantity variable, but it doesn't have any particular value yet. Then get to the scanf line, which just waits until someone types in an integer and hits enter. When you do that, it reads in that number, and since we've told it to put it into our kit quantity variable, it sets that variable's value to 5. Then it continues along the program, declaring and calculating the value of each variable, and then printing out each one. It's kind of rude for a program to just sit there and not tell us what it wants. It does make us feel like it's broken. So before we scan F, we should add a printf statement that asks the user for the number of kits. This makes it a lot more clear that the program isn't broken and just wants something from us. 
Now, whenever an order comes in, we no longer need to edit our code or recompile. We can just rerun our same program again and put in the number of kits, and we have this nice little packing list. Actually, since this program is now useful on its own, I think we should name it. Whenever we've compiled, we just let GCC name the program its default a.out. If you compile a program with dash o, then a name, it'll name the program that instead. So here, I asked GCC to name the program packing. Now we can see that packing program in our directory. To run, instead of typing dot slash a dot out, we type dot slash packing. And we can run this program whenever we want. Our program only reads in a single variable, but you can read as many as you want. If we start to offer optional USB cables for programming the robot, we can also ask how many cables should be packed. We'll create another variable, USB cables, and read that in with scanf as well. Let's just add in the prompt for the user and then add it to our packing list. Now when we run the program, it reads both our variables in order, starting with the kit quantity. After that, it waits to fill in USB cables and prints out the packing list. One last thing, if you're ever running a program and need to exit before completing, you can hit Control C, think C for cancel, and the program will terminate and you'll get back to the command prompt. This is useful for testing, or if something goes wrong with your program and it gets stuck. Note, Mac users, this is still Control, not Command. Now that we can read input from the user, we can create a lot more dynamic programs. Let's take some of the programs we wrote for the operations experiments and swap some of their hard-coded values for input instead. Then you can upload your edited code to the site and it'll test your code to make sure you did it correctly.